app released the iPhone 13 series about four months ago, but I've only upgraded to the iPhone 13 from the iPhone SE 2020 less than a month ago. And in this video, I'm going to talk about all aspects of the phone and my experience with the iPhone 13. This is my first review video in a while, so just sit back and enjoy. The iPhone 13 is nothing special. It's just a minor improvement from the 12, it seems, from the outside. I mean, all that's different is a different camera layout and a smaller notch. The screen is the same size, it still retains the same general flat edge design, and it's very, very average or even below average in some aspects compared to the other 2021 and 2022 flagships. It still doesn't have 120Hz and it still has a giant notch on the top when everyone else has literally moved on to hole punches or even under display cameras. It also only has two main back cameras and has a fairly small battery capacity-wise. But as we dig deeper into all aspects of this phone and get beneath the surface, it'll be pleasantly surprised to see that this is actually a really good phone and a solid yearly update from Apple. So let's first talk about its performance. So Apple design processors are known for their performance and also efficiency. And the iPhone 13's A15 processor is no exception. Although the A15 does outperform the A14, the difference isn't really that much. In fact, the difference is so little that Apple actually compared it to the Snapdragon A65 during the keynote. So you'll only see a performance increase if you're upgrading from iPhone 11 or older. It gets around 4,700 points in Geekbench 5 multi-core and 11,000 points in Geekbench Compute. And Apple usually uses the same processor in both the regular models and the Pro models, maybe with a difference in RAM size, but this year is different. Both the regular 13 and 13 Pro have the same amount of CPU cores, but the A15 on, in the iPhone 13 Pro has 5 GPU cores, while the regular 13 only has 4. This is a result of the practice common in processor manufacturing in which APUs with defective cores have their defective cores disabled and marketed as a lower end model instead of being thrown out altogether, which is actually really good, especially for the current situation in global chip manufacturing. But back to my main point. The iPhone 13 is fast and snappy in real world usage, such as checking social media and gaming, and you shouldn't have any issues with its performance for at least the next two or three years. So yeah, performance on this phone is nothing to worry about. But you should be slightly worried about this RAM, it only has 4 gigabytes of RAM, and although some people are defending Apple saying it's because Apple has better RAM management, I still find it closing apps sometimes, so... Just be aware that its RAM size is smaller than ideal. Now, arguably, the most important part of a phone is the display, since that's the thing you use to actually use the phone. And the iPhone 13's display is fairly average and even below average according to flagship standards. It still has a notch on the top, it's smaller than before, but it's a notch nonetheless. And because notch is slightly taller than before, actually, because the earpiece got moved to the top, it cuts slightly into 18 by 10 videos, which kind of bugs me, but it isn't really that big of an issue. The display is 6.1 inches diagonally, and it gets fairly bright with a normal max brightness of 800 nits, so it's definitely bright enough for outdoors usage, and can boost up to 1200 nits when consuming HDR content. And that's very average compared to other flagships. The display, unfortunately, is still 60 hertz, which is a shame considering that it's a 2021 flagship, and basically every other phone manufacturer's flagships and even mid-range phones support 120 hertz high refresh rate. Otherwise, this average display supports everything it expects it to support, like P3 white color and a claim 2 million to 1 contrast ratio, and it also supports HDR. And it's also an OLED panel, so it does display true blacks, and the viewing angle is pretty good. Now, the battery life, which is very important to me, especially because I was upgrading from the SE 2020, which had a terrible battery life. So the iPhone 12 had an okay battery life, actually, but this year, Apple actually made the phone slightly thicker, not by much, but just slightly, which was fine because literally nobody cares about how thin and light their phones are anymore. So Apple was able to physically 
increase the battery size, but if you look at other flagship phones at the price range, you'll find they will usually have batteries with capacities of at least 4,000 mAh. But the iPhone 13 has a comparably tiny 3200 mAh battery, usually found in smartphones that are already 4 or 3 years old. So you would expect the battery life to be fairly average or even bad, but that's actually not the case at all because the A15 processor's extraordinary efficiency and a slight increase in physical battery capacity, the iPhone 13, at least according to my experience, has an extraordinary battery life, especially compared to its battery capacity. And according to some YouTube comparisons, it has the same amount of battery life or even better than some flagships like the X21 from Samsung. I use my phone a moderate amount a day, like occasional gaming, checking social media, watching videos, streaming music, and taking pictures and videos. And I did not have to charge my phone during the day a single time since, since I got this phone, which is a pretty big achievement, I would say. I often finish the day with around 30% of battery left after five and a half hours of screen on time. If the battery depletes at a constant rate, then it can easily get over seven hours of screen on time. So this phone's battery life is incredible and easily above average, especially for its physically small battery life. I'm seriously impressed how Apple pulled it off. And yeah, that makes a pretty solid yearly upgrade for the battery life. Now, camera. So this phone has a fairly ordinary camera array, or even below average with two sensors, a regular and a 0.5 time ultra wide. Both are 12 megapixels. The main sensor has an f1.6 aperture and the ultra wide is 2.4 and has an average 120 degree field of view, which is actually identical to last year's iPhone 12 Pro. They can all shoot 4K videos in 60 FPS. 12 megapixels doesn't sound like a lot, but the megapixel count isn't everything, and a lot of people need to understand this. So, so let's look at what pictures from this phone are actually like. So as you can see, the pictures look really good. The colors are really balanced, the dynamic range is good. Although the grasses and the tree in the top left could definitely be a bit brighter. You can see the sky and the grass and the houses, are the color of them are perfectly balanced. The dynamic range is good. Although there certainly is room for improvement as the hills does look pretty dark. The shutter speed is fairly fast and the photos tend to lean towards the cooler side. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing depends on preference. The ultra wide is 120 degrees, not particularly wide, but still pretty wide. Curving and bending is noticeable around the edges, but it doesn't bend it to the point of ruining the entire picture. Nine pictures are pretty good. On one hand, it doesn't brighten the image so much that it looks like daytime on some other phones. But on the other hand, pictures taken with night mode are pretty grainy. The front camera is 12 megapixels too, although you have to crop out to use the full 12 megapixels. It has stayed exactly the same since 2019 with the iPhone 11, and it takes some decent selfies. That's all you need to know about the selfie camera. So overall, pictures are really good on the iPhone 13, but it still can be phones like the Pixel 6. Now let's move on to video quality. So, this is a 1080p 30fps video captured on the main back camera of the phone. And the audio is also recorded on the phone too. You can get a sense of the stabilization here. I'm currently uh, jogging in place while filming this. See if the sensor shift stabilization would help. Yeah. Tell me in the comments what you think about the video quality. And as you would expect, the video quality is awesome, as iPhones now have some of this reputation of having good video qualities. The color is really balanced and the stabilization is pretty great too, thanks to the sensor shift stabilization introduced with the 12 Pro Max last year, which shift the camera sensor itself around to stabilize videos instead of moving the lens around. This feature is now standard across the iPhone 13 lineup. But Apple introduced a new feature to video, which they call cinematic mode. Well, fancy name they got there, right? And basically it's just 
Porsche mode video, but more fancy. It's supposed to achieve the blur and focus racking of professional movie cameras, and Apple tried to use that in marketing as shown by their ads called like Hollywood Near Pocket or whatever. But as you can imagine, replicating professional movie cameras with a phone camera is hard. I've literally never used this feature intentionally before. That just shows how useless it is, at least for now. And when I did use it once just for this review video, it really feels like a half-baked and incomplete and unfinished feature. It would nail some really easy shots, but once the scene gets even remotely more complicated, it will only partially focus on the subject or occasionally fail to switch focus at all. So let's just wait for a few years to see if this feature would actually be useful. And the 13 also added a new feature to photos too, photographic styles. And this one is actually useful. And it might look like filters you already have in your existing phone, but it's not. They're different from filters. They're way more advanced. They're actually similar to color profiles in professional cameras, and they change the way the ISP processes the image altogether. And you can't change the layer, so it's not a filter. Every picture you take on your phone goes through a processing. And this basically just changes how the image signal processor processes the image. So you can make your picture look however you want and make it stay permanent that way. So yeah, it's not a filter. Basically, if you don't like the way iPhone photos look, like in warmth or contrast, as I mentioned earlier, iPhone pictures usually lean towards the cooler side. You can always adjust them. There are five presets you can choose from, which are standard, rich contrast, vibrant, warm, and cool. And the five pro uh, presets are usually pretty good at covering all of the things you would expect. But you can also always adjust the warmth and contrast yourself to the perfect level if you want to. I really like the vibrant one, although it sometimes makes photos look overexposed. So my favorite one is definitely Rich Contrast. It just makes the photos look so much better and I use it to take every picture, basically. So yeah, this year the camera received a moderate update and it's definitely a nice update. Okay, all of the features I mentioned that are pretty cool, but how does all of that translate into everyday use? Well, even though its hardware sounds average or even lackluster in some areas, it's actually a really good phone for everyday usage. The fastest Snappy A15 processor basically promises you 2 to 3 years of lag free usage and 6 years of software support. The camera array, although few in quantity, takes very high quality photos and videos alike, with new features too. The battery life is one of the best in the industry, and I, despite being a moderate to somewhat heavy user, can comfortably finish a day with sometimes 35% of battery left, or even 40% on lighter days. The display is the perfect size for consuming content and using one-handed. Although it's a bummer that it still has a notch and doesn't have a 120 hertz, Apple managed to make the phone good, despite its hardware being unexceptional. And that's how you know a company knows what they're doing. So in the end, if you have iPhone X or earlier, or maybe an iPhone 11 even, this phone is absolutely worth it to upgrade to, especially for its consistency and top of the line battery life. This is my first review video in a while, so sorry if I'm a bit bad at this now. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys soon. Bye.